Hi, I'm Michael James, founder and chief architect of Advanced Technology at Cerebra Systems. And what are, we, what are you holding here? So what, what you're looking at here is the world's largest and most powerful computer chip. It, it has an array of a, thousand, of a million cores in a thousand by thousand grid. And uh, we, we use this for doing uh, AI and very data intensive applications. A million cores but there, on one a, chip? There's a million cores, so this is a, um, a, a full wafer. It is 300 millimeters from corner to corner, and if you look really close right here, you can still see the, the rounding of the original wafer at the margins. And if I zoom in, will I be able to see some cores? Well, you, you'll, you'll see the uh, power and ground pins that, that actually feed the individual cores. You, you should be able to get that. So. Is that a solution to do a whole bunch of cores to do the best AI supercomputing in the world? I, yes, yeah, so I, I think we, we have the world's fastest inference by a large margin. That This is 20 times faster at, uh, at standard inference problems than any NVIDIA platform. And, and so people sometimes ask, how many GPUs is that? Well, it's an infinite number. There's no number of GPUs that can produce a solution as fast as this. So if there's a real-time problem where you, where you need the solution right away, that this is one of the engines you would want to consider. And so you put it in there? there there's exactly, this is our node. It's a CS3. There is one chip that goes in here and he slides down. What you're looking at is 3D power distribution. So this part consumes 25 kilowatts. That's 30,000 amps in and 30,000 amps of return current. So you can't use a conventional power supply that goes right next to the chip. That would melt the part. Uh, instead, we, we have uh, the, the power delivery right, right in the front here. So here, here are 12 a AC to DC power supplies. And the, the, the entire solution really lives in the shadow of the wafer. Right? He, he's mounted back there. Nice. So it we just feeds in all this power? Well, so, so the, the, the power's got to be uh, on the front face because we can't bring it across. So all, all of this is the engineering complexity. The, the reason why we, we, we have the entire memory here interleaved with the computing core. So everything is very close, very, very power efficient. Uh, but the, the challenge is we, you, you can't do the standard thing. So we, we have to bring the power in the front. And then there's a whole lot of technology to manage and make sure that we have a smooth power delivery. There, there's no room for the bulk capacitors. A capacitor out on the side wouldn't really have effect in the center, and so all, all of the power supplies, we get them as close as we can. So there's a whole uh, array right here of power regulators plugging in, and there are individual power pucks that do the final transform. There's still some inductance in the system, so if you imagine all these cores are computing, they're doing a, an inference, and they say, it, it, it's a cat. The, the image of the cat finally came out, and now they all turn off. You, you would then get a, a current spike in here. And so there's uh, some more advanced logic that, that monitors the power consumption. If they're going to turn off too abruptly, it will actually do some dummy operations, just multiply random numbers together to make sure that we have a gentle power ramp. And so those little dots I see in the corner of each, how do you build this chip? Is it like a multiple dies that you connect? No, th this is one piece of silicon. It's, uh, we, we cut the ears off, but otherwise it's a full single wafer. There, there are multiple exposures, so uh, each, each reticle, which would be a traditional computer chip, is overlapped a little bit, so we can continue having a, a, a really fine grain uh, interconnect over the surface of these things. And then you, you asked what all these holes are. These are actually screw holes. So the, uh, there, there, there were two challenges. We, we know uh, when, when you take a part into a foundry, it's always going to come up with, uh, with defects. That, that's what prevents people from making large chips. So that there's a, a very clever over-provisioning scheme that even if there are hundreds of dead cores, because all the cores are identical, we, we can route the communication pattern like an airfoil over here and still recover a perfect Cartesian grid connectivity. So every system, although there's a million cores, at least 900,000 of them we guarantee will go into the deployment as working. Uh, otherwise, we would put it in a plaque like this for, for display. So does that mean and you have 100% yield? There's a hundred percent, like all, all of these parts will always work in the lab, even if you had like a... Every, a, every uh, wafer that comes out of the yeah. fab is a hundred percent perfect. Yeah, well, I mean, even they're, they're if not a hundred percent perfect, course, but you make so, it work. So, suppose I put a fingerprint over here and I had a big fingerprint defect. We would be able to take the cores above and below that, that smudge and we would just configure them to act as pass-throughs. And then the, the remaining part would be like an airstream 
going over. And so the, the whole thing would still support a good application, but we wouldn't want to take that one and give it to a customer. That, that could go as a uh, engineering sample in our lab. So we can always make them work. I am, and we take the uh, sort of best... Uh, it's automatic? The, the way it reroutes and everything? It detects? Yeah, it's, it's software controlled. So, so we will scan this, find which, where the defects are. There, there's a map. And we put that into a, a constraint solving problem to find the, the largest uh, Cartesian grid that, that we can superimpose on the set of cores that do work. So most of the errors are just salt and pepper sprinkled over here. And we, we can always uh, recover those. So is this an ARM SOC? Uh, well, the, this chip is entirely proprietary design, so it's a data flow is built for strong scaling. Uh, and what that means is if you have a, a, if I have a workload, there's maybe a relatively small workload, but I want to spread it out over the entire chip. Now, now there's not very much work per each core, because when I divide the total number of flaps by a million, there's just going to be a small number of loop iterations. So we've taken all of the data access patterns, the loop induction variables, the, the network stack, the uh, parts of the OS that was scheduled between different threads, and, and we've baked all of that into the instruction set architecture. So anytime I say C equals A plus B, the, the operands control where I access data from, where, where that goes in the network, how, how the things interleave. And, and so we, we are able to therefore ha have a very fine-grained execution pattern because we're not depending on software. It's all in the hardware that does that. And so that's what makes us a, a data flow processor. And 20 times faster than NVIDIA GPUs, that's for sure? Your customers the, say that also? The, I, the, the customers say that, that there's third-party benchmarking, so we don't rely on any of our, our own uh, benchmarks for this. And, and you can see, I, I'm sure videos in the background, at some point you, you will see the uh, language models side by side with the same prompt. So the, the ones that are going to Cerebrus will just come out there with, with the answer. And you'll, you'll see the word, word at a time that that's usually a, a query going to one of our competitors. So is it mass production? We, we have data centers across the world. We, we deploy these uh, usually about 100 nodes at a time in a multi-megawatt facility. Uh, and they, they are widely deployed right now. And uh, what generation is this of your technology? The, the, is this, this is a third generation part. This is a, a five nanometer uh, tape out right here. Uh, and so it could just go keep going in the future, right? The, we, the I, roadmap is cool. We, we, I, 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 I'm not going to be able to share specifics, but I think that if, if you look at the next designs that we'll come out with, uh, they, they might make this one seem quaint. And uh, uh, on the wall here, uh, you talk a little bit about some Asteroid impact simulation, uh, all kinds of things people are doing with this. Yes. Uh, so so th this is a first large scale HPC run. We, we, we use clusters to solve AI problems all the time. But in, in uh, high performance computing, we're, we're solving the shallow water equations here. Th this is the entire planet that was uh, simulated with 200 meter resolution. So although you see the whole thing there, you can zoom in and, and see uh, individual cities and, and sort of the coastline rendered. And we, we took an asteroid and slammed it right off the coast of California and watched the, the waves propagate worldwide. But what, what's impressive uh, about this is the uh, end output performance was uh, several times faster than a full exascale machine, despite having a, a much smaller deployment size. Uh, the, the power draw was only about 10% of what exascale consumes. So it's a, a, a world's fastest uh, shallow water equation simulation. Nice. And uh, what do you have here on the wall? Uh, what are you talk, talking about there? I, I, goodness. I, so, so th these are some AI models. There's uh, um, the the Sonnet 4.5 model, and it seems to be solving a video game. I uh, and and so, yeah. I, and uh, over here, uh, I see uh, it says uh, Meta. So you run you run open source models on your on uh, some customers do. Uh, we, we run open source models. They're, they're all of the popular ones. Uh, we, we have the uh, open AI models. There are the, the llamas. We have the... Uh, um, all, uh, the Quen, DeepSeek. The, the, uh, the, the, the Quen and DeepSeek. Those are the names I was looking for, yes. Nice. All right. So, uh, so it's an exciting uh, supercomputing event. You have a lot of discussions. Uh, with interesting people that want to work with you? Uh, we, we, we love coming to the supercomputing event. Uh, we, we work with a lot of the U.S. national labs, and uh, so our, our, our customer base is here. 
Uh, th there's also uh, coming forward a, a bunch of vendors that I either want to work with or are working with us always stop by. At the beginning of our project, uh, you can imagine when we were starting out, we, we would go with some advanced ideas and it's no, 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 uh, across the board, it's, it's difficult to, to find things. But uh, as we got, it came successfully with a wafer scale product and, and we kind of impressed the field, now vendors come to us and they, they look for how can we change our solutions to fit your architecture. And uh, can you say just a little bit more about the proprietary acceleration system? Sorry, say, uh, say What is again? the architecture? What can you say some more about uh, how you designed it? It, it, it's, it's very geometric in, in the way it works. So uh, what, what we see as we map problems here is we, we want to take the mathematics that you run and spread it over spatial regions of, of the cores. Uh, when, when we run uh, an AI model, uh, at the very early days, we, we would do a pipeline because the AI models were much smaller than they are today. And there would maybe be a 50 layer network with different layers allocated like a floor plan over here. Uh, t today, the transformer models are, are much bigger and they, they have layers where we can take a single layer of the transformer and stretch it across the entire chip and that's using the strong scaling. So that's exactly why we're good at the AI inference is you need to get through uh, each layer as fast as you can and we can use the entire power of the chip uh, to, to one matrix multiply and then get to the next one in rapid order. Uh, and what do we see behind you? Uh, so that, that's our new Oklahoma uh, data center. Uh, I, I, there, there are hundreds of these machines uh, installed in this facility, and we, we, we just powered this one on a, a few weeks ago. Don't get fooled by fake HDMI products. Only source authentic HDMI products from licensed HDMI adopters and authorized manufacturers and resellers to ensure compliance. Counterfeit or unlicensed products can cause poor performance. Certified HDMI products undergo official testing for safety and spec compliance. Avoid brand damage, warranty issues, and customer dissatisfaction from unlicensed products. Long-term cost savings come from reliable, genuine HDMI solutions. Unlicensed products may lack support and pose safety risks. Use certified HDMI cables with official HDMI certification labels. Report suspected counterfeit products at hdmi.org slash resource slash infringe. Thanks to our global partners for helping keep the HDMI brand real and ensuring consumers get the experience they deserve.